There's so many street foods and we just got into Peshawar. Look at this, guys. Wow. Oh, look at this mountain of beef pulao rice. Yo, yo, welcome back to Street Food with Sempa. Today we're going to Pakistan where we'll be tackling golden pulao from the city of Peshawar. Yo, hold up a minute. Let me channel my inner haspula. <laughs> Uh -huh. It's this ridiculous mountain of cinnamon spiced rice combined with golden raisins and chickpeas And then it's topped with huge chunks of fall off the bone beef shank Let's exit the wrong way and get started We'll bang out the beef shank first as it takes a good 5-6 hours to cook Give it a good sear on all sides and 4 tablespoons of ghee You can also blast this in a very hot oven with convection heat on Cooking a whole shank is kinda crazy so feel free to use chuck roast at home After removing the shank sear add a third cup sliced ginger and half a cup garlic Garlic cloves. Saute that over medium heat until lightly caramelized, then add 4 tablespoons coriander, 2 tablespoons cumin, 20 cloves, 1 tablespoon of ajwan seeds, then 2 tablespoons red chili flakes at the very end. Add 4 tablespoons of salt in the style of everyone's favorite celebrity chef. Nah, you Gordon, get back in line, bud. Add the beef wad back in and enough water to cover halfway, around 7.6 cups. While that's coming up to a boil, get the whole production crew to help you find aluminum foil. For a chuck roast at home, cook at 350 for around 4 hours. Because of the size, this shank took around 5.5. I recommend a much more appropriate pan than this guy. It'll save you the walk of shame and 7 minutes of cleanup. I made the 200 IQ play to start this in my Airbnb, so it had time to completely cool in the liquid before I reheated it. It comes out way juicier that way. You gotta have a little nibble here because your boy was hungry. Strain all the spices out and skim off most of the fat but keep that liquid gold on hand to drizzle over the meat later. It's just full of so much beefy flavor infused with all those spices. Now onto the rice portion. For our spices, heat a pan over medium heat and add six black cardamom, eight green cardamom, one tablespoon cumin seeds, four small sticks of cinnamon, and one tablespoon of black pepper. When it starts to smoke and it's really fragrant, allow it to cool down. Throw that in a blender, try to turn it on, and no oh God, there is our beautiful Palau spice. Next, julienne one red onion, which we'll saute in half a cup of ghee. I had two pots going here to make a massive rice pile. Cook over medium heat until deeply caramelized. This gives the rice a really intense aromatic flavor. Once that's looking righteous, add in those palau spices. Cook that for 30 seconds before adding two cups of golden raisins, two cups cooked chickpeas, and four cups of washed basmati rice, and give that a mix. Add five cups of that reserved beef stock and then bring it to a boil. Cover it up and simmer for 15 to 20 minutes. Uncover Cover, fluff it up, and taste for salt, as you may need more. To plate, try to stack it as high as you can without causing a disaster like I did. Then grab that caveman meat stick and plop it right on top for one sick thumbnail. This how it is would be a great art installation or a great at a medieval wedding, but to make it more consumable, let's break it down. Chop up that juicy beef and munch on it out of frame. Plate up some golden pulao and shower it with meat, and some cilantro for brightness. Hot damn, that stuff is mad decent. So many warm spices, and those raisins, man, they add a blast of sweetness. It'd be hard to choose which I'd rather have, those raisins or all that collagen-rich beef. Pulao definitely deserves to be up there with biryani in terms of, like, greatest international dishes. One more bite and no mas. I'll save the rest for 2 a.m. Right up here, there's a famous, famous meat joint, Nisar Charsi Kebabs, also known as the Pot Smokers Meat Lounge. Bonus clip, we'll also be making Charsi Tikka Kebabs, these marinated lamb skewers grilled over charcoal. The owner here has become famous for a different kind of smoke flavor he likes to consume. Proceed with caution depending on your country and your state's laws. We'll start this by making ginger garlic paste. In a food processor, combine one part sliced ginger and two parts garlic cloves. Pulse that until pretty fine, scraping down the sides once or twice. Transfer that to a container and cover that completely with a neutral oil. And this stuff basically lasts months in the freezer. You might have noticed that it's a little smoky here in the background and we'll address that later. But first, combine one pound of lamb shoulder, three tablespoons Greek yogurt, quarter teaspoon of cumin, quarter teaspoon coriander, one teaspoon black pepper, one and a quarter teaspoon kosher salt, and two tablespoons of that ginger garlic paste. Give it a good mixing and then refrigerate that, preferably overnight. Now the veggies here aren't traditional, but it does give a nice contrast and color to the dish. Skewer a few pieces of lamb, then alternate with some peppers and onions. Repeat that till you got a bunch of skewers. Now let's address that fire. This is a Japanese Conroe grill that we tried to light inside, but after some watery eyes and cough filled debate, we decided that going outside might be best for our future. 
Give the skewers a nice char on the grill and cook it to your desired doneness. I recommend medium, it'll give you the best texture and flavor. Plate those boys up and pick out the most handsome of the bunch. Yeah, this one over here looking all cute. These skewers got a nice smoky, peppery flavor with just a touch of spice. As much as humans have evolved over the years, it's hard to beat meat on a stick cooked over some fire. God bless our hairy ancestors.